Hey, you should know by now that we released the Elemental website course or the new version, and it's gone down really, really well with people that have got it. But there has been some interest in how did we exactly create the course in terms of delivering the content, especially with the one page navigation, which is what you can see on the screen right now. And how did we restrict access? And I did this all for free. I'm not using some special LMS software or tool. I'm just using Elementor Pro. And that is one thing I really wanted to do when I built out the course. I wanted to kind of show you that it is really the versatile. So how did I build this and how did I restrict the pages? Well, let's go on to how we restricted first. I use this free plugin called Page Restrict for WooCommerce. You just install it. Obviously, you set up your course to be a WooCommerce product. You go and build your page. In this case, it's called the Elemental Course, and that's the page over there. And then I restricted it by these products. You just go and select your products, basically. Doesn't matter how many you got, you can select them. So I've said you can't access that unless you go and buy the new course. But if you got the old course, I allow you to have access as well. Or if you did an upgrade when I had the old course available. So this is locking gear, and you could lock different pages, different posts via a WooCommerce product. That's how really easy it is. So you might have, say, 20 courses, and you might say, you got to either buy a bulk of products or one or more products or whatever you want, and you can totally lock it down. But the creme de la creme is how I did this. This is one page on the desktop. We have like a one page navigation system. When you click on any of these, it just kind of jumps around. And this is basically a page loaded with containers. So how was I able to add in tons of images, tons of videos, tons of content all within here without adding in any lag? with a special little trick. So at the very top, we have a parent container. And inside of that, we have a heading, which you can see there. We got a text editor and I got a divider. Then below that, we have a parent container and everything you see sits inside of that parent container. It's a bit surprising to hear that, but everything is like a child container within. Let me expand on it and seriously stay with me on this, okay? We have here a nav container or a child container, and then we have loads of other child containers. And they go on and on and on for every single one of these items over here. So let's go to the very first one. The well, no, sorry. Let's go back to the parent. The parent is set as a row, 100% uh, width. Um, you know, there might be some padding and whatever, but the main thing is that it is set as a row. Inside of that, we have the nav. The nav is set to be 18%. I could have gone with 15, I could have gone with 20, it all depended on how long these words were. 18% works really well, even when you're on a 1200 width screen. You're not meant to be used this course on a tablet or a mobile because of the way I'm displaying the content, but I kind of make that clear somewhere over here. So let's expand on the nav child container. I'm gonna click it and you will just see loads and loads of buttons because that's literally all it is. These are just buttons and the buttons don't even have a link. There's no, I, you know, there's nothing going on there. And there is an ID, I lie there, but there is no link, okay? So these just have a text. You have a bit of style and you pop whatever text you want into there. You go to the advanced tab. Here's the key bit. I've called it button 001. So button one is button 001. You go to button number two and the ID for that is surprise, surprise, button 002. Button 003, 4, 5, 6, 7. It goes all the way down over here. And then right at the bottom, I even added in a PayPal button. The other thing right at the bottom, Bo, before the thing right at the bottom, is the HTML code. But we're going to come back onto that, okay? So the nav bar is just 18%. Now let's go on to the other individual child containers. We have welcome resources, design settings. It basically matches what you see in the nav bar. This is just a child container, and I set it to be 81. So my nav bar is 18 and this is 81. I know you're going to say, but there's 1% left over. Yeah, that's because I've got space between. You go over to my parent, I've got space between there. If I went and did left align, can you now see they meet up? So by leaving a percent left over, it just create the gap for me. I didn't have to sit there and go, right, my gap is going to be 12 pixel or 15 pixel. Just adjust your percentage and let the gap that remains create your gap for you. The welcome child tab, can contain whatever you want. Text editor, you can have a PayPal button in there, you can add a video, you can add HTML, you can add images, you can do whatever layout you want. It's a child container. If you wanna do column or rows, whatever you want, okay? Like this is another child container inside of here that contains this part. 
So I had like another text editor and a video and a separate button. So the beauty of the containers is you can layer them however you want. But the important bit is that every single one of these child containers that now follows, if you go to the advanced tab, you will see that we have the class name container. Now, this isn't something I would always recommend you do. Go and put a name that actually is more meaningful and makes more sense and isn't going to screw up like the way you look at things because you're going to see the word econ or container somewhere in your um, page source or when you inspect the page. So calling the class container. But I just did to keep it really, really simple. And if anyone wants to throw anything, 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 thing, thing at me, you can do. For a client, I would not recommend putting the word container. Put something a little bit more meaningful to what we're doing here. And the ID is container 001. Okay, so button 001, container 001, button 002, container 002, button 003, and then you have container 003. And you follow that logic because the code I'm going to share with you and show you, and there will be a link to this code in the video description. When you click button 003, it will make container 003 visible. And that's the trick to how we're able to build this all out without slowing or lagging down the page because they're not all visible at the same time. Well, they will be in a moment. Let's go back to the nav child container and I'm not going to go through all of these child containers because you would have built them out. If we go to the bottom down here where we have the HTML, I'm now just going to get rid of that code. And now when you scroll down, you are going to see every single container unlocked and the sidebar kind of just stays over there and it looks quite messy because there's a bit of overlap going on. That's because this nav bar, if I just click onto it over here, if we go over to the advanced tab, go to motion effects, you will see that it is set to be a sticky top with an offset of 53. Because if I had it as a zero like that, as I scroll down, can you see it now moves out of view? So by me adding in 53, even when you scroll up and down, it will stay there. So the way it was built was I made the nav bar not be sticky because otherwise it gets in your way as you're building. And then I didn't have the HTML activated so I could go into every single container and start and add, well, basically add what I needed to add. Let me now just pop the HTML back in and let's expand on that code just so that you understand what it does. I mean, surprisingly, that's it. That's the code. That's literally it. I might just zoom in on my screen. Please excuse the fact if the buttons look a bit funny, but that is the entirety of the code. The first thing it does is say, if your class name is container, display is none. OK, so all of these containers from 1 to 20, the display is set to none, which is why when this loads through, you don't see all of them in one go. So in the code, you are going to see container 001, which is the first one, display flex. So even though I've said dot container, uh, don't display them. Hashtag container 001 is the ID container 001. It will display that. If I was to get rid of that bit of code there, what would happen is that it would then not display the welcome either, which I felt was really pointless because you don't want to click on welcome to see the welcome. You should kind of see that from default. I also reinforced that down here where I'm saying if you are not container 001, do not show you. OK, just in case this was kind of like there was like a bit of a momentary flash that was happening. If I'm going to be brutally honest, even when I had this, the page loaded up and you would see a mo like literally a split second flash. By me adding this into the script, it removed that flash totally. And the rest of the code just does like I said. Everything is hidden and it won't become visible unless you click on the relevant button. So when you click on button 007, container 007 becomes visible. This is all within Elementor and that code is not super duper complex. I mean, yeah, you might look at it and go exactly what is that doing, but it's not a long winded one. And if you want to get this code and you want to go and build out your own LMS or you want to sell courses, but you don't want to have to subscribe to a third party platform or get a special theme or another service. This is a super easy way to do it. I hope you enjoyed what I showed you. I'd love to see your comments. If you think it could be better, let me know. I would love to see what else I can do to adapt and make this even better. But by this nav bar being like a sticky column or a sticky top, it doesn't matter how much content I have. So let's go to this one here. As I scroll down, the nav bar stays in view, which is why this is not good to look at on a tablet or a mobile, because I want you to be able to move up and down and jump between other items. 
And yes, we do provide you with code as well in here, right? So you're not just getting descriptions and images and video, you're getting a ton of detail. Hey, I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, go and get the course. If you have got the course, let us know in the comments how you're finding the course. Is it helping you out? I know it is helping you out because I do get feedback, but stick it in the comments. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain.